Hi, hi, everybody. 大家好 I welcome you to J Palace Yamigo. My name is Yaya. Cosplay may not be such a modern concept, so let's get started. We all know the term cosplay. We see it at conventions and events all the time. It's a pretty popular hobby and lifestyle for many people. But there is an unexpected historical figure that also enjoyed this hobby. Emperor Yongzhen was the fourth emperor of the Qing Dynasty. Born Yingzhen, he was the fourth son of Emperor Kangxi and the father of Emperor Qianlong. I will talk more in depth about him in the future. He is such an interesting and mysterious figure, and I just can't cover it all today. In a collection of paintings called Yongzhen Xing Le Tu, we see a whole different side of the emperor. A Xing Le Tu is a painting that represents an idealized portrayal of domestic life within the royal palace. These types of paintings started around the northern and southern dynasties and continued to gain popularity from then on. The thing about Yongzhen was that he was heavily criticized for his ruthlessness. He was a strict emperor and was dedicated to his role. However, these portraits are a sharp contrast to his previous controversial image. To the surprise of historians, Emperor Yongzhen. Was a big fan of cosplay. Obviously, the term cosplay is a little different here. He wasn't dressed up as characters from Genshin Impact or anything, of course, but he was still dressing up as different characters and personas. In the collection, we have a series of Yongzhen wearing different types of outfits, doing different things, and in various settings. Here are some of the Xing Le Tu paintings and what they depict. The emperor depicted as a Taoist magician. The emperor depicted in the clothing of a Tibetan lama. Yongzhen imitating a Buddhist monk looking down a stream. Here he is imitating a Taoist in search of elixirs. Yongzhen imitating a scholar playing a zither. Imitating a poet composing poems on a wall. Imitating a scholar stealing magic peaches from the deity Shi Wangmu while teasing a monkey. I feel like this is a nod to Journey to the West. Imitating a recluse sitting in a boat. Imitating a landowner watching an account book. Here he is dressed up as a Western hunter wearing a Western wig. Emperor Yongzhen as a hermit being carried across the sea. The emperor as a woodsman carrying an axe. Yongzhen in Mongolian clothing. Here he's cosplaying as an ordinary peasant. Here we have the emperor wearing Han clothing in nature, and another one of emperor wearing Han clothing overlooking a river. Emperor Yongzhen cosplaying as an ordinary fisherman, and here we have the emperor hunting a peacock. These are so elaborate. He basically had everything a modern cosplayer would have in their closet. He is depicted holding props and having character accurate costumes. He even had wigs. My favorite is the extravagant curled Western styled wig that is not only depicted in the Xing Le Tu, but also in full on portraits. From seeing Yongjin's interest in dressing up in Western clothing, we can also see his willingness to learn about cultures outside Chinese borders. That's pretty cool. This man was dedicated enough to have custom costumes, props. And accessories made. If that doesn't scream cosplayer, I don't know what does. Even crazier, apparently this interest of his was evidently passed down to his child, Emperor Qianlong. Emperor Qianlong also had many paintings commissioned that were set in different dynasties, settings, and costumes. Though Qianlong most likely didn't dress up like his father did. Just commissioned paintings. 
He seemed to enjoy having himself painted as famous historical figures, as opposed to everyday citizens like his father did. As in, he copied famous paintings of scholars and poets and would have himself painted in their stead. You know the absolute best thing about this emperor's cosplaying hobby? His passion for dressing up wasn't limited to himself. He even dressed up his dogs. A man after my own heart. Yongjin was an avid dog lover. During his time in the palace, he would let the eunuchs keep many dogs. They each had a unique name that had nice auspicious meanings. The way this man cared for his dogs? I'm speechless. He even made imperial decrees just to tailor clothes for the dogs. The materials used for the dog outfits were all from tributes to the royal family, meaning top quality. He would use fur from tigers, leopards, mink, and other exotic animals to make dog clothes. Each piece had to meet his high expectations and be made flawlessly. Yongjin would personally check them carefully. If there were any flaws at all, not only would he give it a bad review, he would immediately call for it to be changed until done correctly. Even small details like buttons, if a button was not strong enough, it needed to be refastened and delivered. This shows how important these dogs were to him, and this is a sentiment that I can understand. So, was he actually dressing up as these characters and posing for these portraits? Most likely not. Let me rephrase that. He did own the garments that were depicted in the paintings, which means that he may have dressed up in them. But at the same time, Yongjin was an extremely busy and diligent emperor, so it was not likely that he was taking time out of his schedule just to pose for a painting for hours. It wasn't like he was posing for a photo. These were hand-painted paintings. It took hours for just one piece to be drawn. Most likely, he wore the outfits briefly for the artist to reference for a short time, and the rest was up to the artist's interpretation and imagination. I mean, he has a portrait of himself fighting a full-on tiger with only a spear. I'm just saying, it's not likely something that he would have done just to pose for a portrait. Even if you wanted to argue that it doesn't count as him cosplaying if he didn't actually dress up, it still shows a very interesting side of an important historical figure. He still had these paintings commissioned. The fact that they exist shows an interest that is similar to modern cosplay. How is it different than having a cosplayer making their outfits just to take awesome photos? And from a historical point of view, it shows a fun side to a figure that is normally the opposite of fun. It humanizes them, allowing us to remember that he wasn't just an emperor. He had interests and hobbies outside of his role that his history and controversial ascension to the throne wasn't just who he was. You can find these amazing paintings at the Forbidden City Museum, also known as the Palace Museum in Beijing, where they are perfectly preserved. It's definitely on my bucket list. Finally, what were his reasons for dressing up? Many speculate that it was to make him seem like a well-rounded universal ruler, that he was willing to understand all aspects of his citizens, be it religious, class, or lifestyle. It could be that maybe it was a way for him to experience things that he wanted to do, but couldn't due to his status as the emperor of the Qing dynasty. Or we don't even have to look too deep into it he could have just really enjoyed cosplaying. Does there need to be a reason? I have a teespring if you like to support the channel. I have a lot of super cute designs that I'm really proud of, so please check it out if you can. Link is in the description below.
So what do you guys think? What are your thoughts about this cosplaying emperor? Leave a comment down below because I would like to know. You can also let me know what topics you would like to see me cover in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to Jade Palace Yamingo. I would very much appreciate it. And until next time, Taijinla! Bye-bye!